Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. In a year of uncertainty, anxiety and unprecedented change, you can always rely on one constant in the clusterfunk that is 2020. Seth Rollins feuding with the Mysterios. Their rivalry stretches all the way back to May, which feels significantly longer than just six months ago. Since then, Ray has lost an eye, his son Dominic made a very impressive in-ring debut, all four Mysterios got some heartwarming family bonding revenge with kendo sticks, and most recently, Seth's former disciple Murphy has been getting incredibly close to Ray's daughter Aaliyah. Somehow, in a feud that had a man's eyeball literally detached from his face, it's the latter part that has been the most controversial. A vocal portion of WWE's audience are very uncomfortable with consenting adult actors 32-year-old Murphy and 19-year-old Aaliyah being in a romantic storyline. But a far larger portion love it. With any WWE clip on YouTube using her on the thumbnail getting significantly more views than average. Why do you think it's the thumbnail for this video? Which means WWE might be about to step it up a gear. Dave Meltzer has pointed out the storyline has similarities with a Conan angle in the Puerto Rican promotion CWC. If that's the case, it means we're heading towards a good old-fashioned wrestling wedding between Murphy and Aaliyah, with Seth Rollins revealing he manipulated the whole situation. In more serious news, however, with WWE's continued delays in getting back on the road for live events, only managing to have their most profitable year ever in the company, more cutbacks have been made to their staffing, with PW Insider reporting that around 10 to 15 staff members have been let go. The most recognisable name is longtime ring announcer Tony Chimmel, famed for his iconic call of Edge's entrance, who had transitioned to a backstage role of production and overseeing ring crew in 2015. Jerry Soto, the longtime Spanish announcer, was also released, as well as Derek Castleman, their former director of venue merchandise, who had been with WWE since 1993 and was reportedly well liked by many in the company. But for a change, WWE are also on the receiving end of a release. WWE debuted their Thunderdome setup on the SummerSlam Go Home episode of SmackDown, which actually managed to turn around their show's drastically falling ratings and even won industry awards, with its massive atmosphere improvements over the Performance Center tapings. Due to travel restrictions and the Thunderdome being complex to set up, WWE have made their Amway Center their semi-permanent home. But now, according to PW Insight, the venue is forcing WWE to move out by December 5th, under a month away, as the NBA is hoping to start up a new season there with the Orlando Magic moving in. Whether WWE will continue to use the Thunderdome setup in a different venue or not is unclear, but the company have reportedly discussed new venues in Texas, Illinois, and Florida. WWE's current contract with the Amway Center expires on November 24th, two days after Survivor Series. Now it's time for a review of last night's episode of Raw in about five minutes. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Fug Life, Andreas Fuglestalla, and the craftsman Blake. I don't know what that last name is. Ms. TV and the Bank obnoxiously opened the show to promote brand new episodes of Ms. and Mrs. and their six-man tag main event, where Drew McIntyre and the New Day were set to face Ms. Morrison and an unhinged, unhappy Randy Orton. Orton interrupted from out of paranoia, begging Ms. to cash in his title shot right now, but Drew and the New Day came out for a brawl instead. Randy seeing threats from every angle was superbly performed, juggling feuds with Drew and Ms. despite tagging with the last Tom Phillips promoted the final appearance of The Undertaker at Survivor Series. <laughs> final appearance from The Undertaker. Good one, Phillips. Hot off his decisive loss to Jeff Hardy, star WWE is high on backstage Elias continued his feud with Jeff Hardy and lost to Matt Riddle in an action-packed triple threat last chance match to decide the last Team Raw member for Survivor Series. My captain, oh my captain AJ Styles, welcomed his team down to the ring later on, declaring Riddle as the answer to their problems. He was the missing piece, and now they can all get along, which led to everyone not getting along. Riddle said he knew how to get everyone to chill out. Matt, that's a violation of the drug testing policy. Oh, right, right. Code names. 
He wanted to give everyone code names. This was bad WWE comedy that actually worked with Riddle's delivery. His natural charm billowed through when he wished Keith a real life happy birthday. Happy birthday, Keith. This led to your friend Mark's favourite indie tag team from 2018. They're just not as good anymore. Riddle and Lee taking on Sheamus and Braun Strowman with AJ as the special guest referee. They had another really fun action-packed match with big beefy spots and an awesome Lee hot tag that even involved spirit bombing Riddle onto Sheamus, which apparently doesn't hurt you when you're the weapon. Braun and Sheamus fought over who got to finish the match, which Riddle capitalised on with a roll-up to win. How will they come? Coexist. The Men's Survivor Series team storyline has been refreshingly fun for a change. With one hell of a raw lineup, Riddle and Lee actually getting some wins, Riddle won twice on this show alone, and a brilliant comedy performance from Captain AJ. The women's side isn't so good. It has the fun of Nia Jax putting Lana through a table every week, but the awkward, one-dimensional act of Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke sap the energy out of any segment they're part of. Which makes no sense when you've got perfectly good Nikki Cross and Naomi's with nothing to do at Survivor Series. Shayna Baszler made Lana tap in a minute first, which led to Mandy and Dana stopping Nia putting her through the table, blonde power, but then confusingly told Lana to leave them alone backstage afterwards, and then ask a defense her Raw Women's title against Jax later on, while Lana, Dana, and Mandy cheered for the champion. Baszler caused the DQ, and Nia put Lana through the announcer's table. Nia and Shayna are great, but the rest of the team's infighting is repetitive with the men doing the same thing, and nowhere near as good. Alexa Bliss, meanwhile, has a really intriguing story with Nikki Cross bubbling away backstage. Cross told Bliss to choose between her and The Fiend, and Bliss let him in. The Hurt Business beat up 24-7 champion Drew Gulak for having the audacity to wear a clip-on tie, which, to be fair, is very practical when the major hazard of your job is surprise roll-ups, so R-Truth pinned him and won the 24-7 title back, who then lost it to Akira Tozawa in a seven-person title match later on, who lost it to Eric of the Viking Raiders, who lost it to Drew, who lost it to Tucker, who lost it back to Drew, who lost it back to Tucker, who lost it to Grand Meta Leak, who lost it to Lince Dorado, who lost lost it to our truth for his 44th reign. Everyone's a loser. I'm so sorry, Eric and Tucker. Caruso alert. Charlie announced Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin will be facing the new day for the Raw Tag Team titles next Monday. But before then, the Hurt Business has to get through Titus O'Neil. Bobby Lashley did in seconds. Angel Garza tried to chat up your mum again. And what is actually my favourite thing on Raw right now, faces and heels showed they can be mates. Sheamus blew up at his longtime friend McIntyre backstage in frustration at his Survivor Series team, saying he wanted Drew to be the last man on it. But McIntyre managed to cheer him up with some New Day power of positivity. This is building very neatly to Sheamus eventually turning on Drew, which is a feud I cannot wait for. Surprisingly, the biker mice from Mars then had match of the night. Ricochet took on Ali following Retribution's beatdown of him the previous week, playing it up as though this was actually a long-running personal feud. Which, in a way, it actually is, kind of, if you really, really grasp for it. Ricochet had trusted Ali in those never-ending Hurt Business few days of the summer, and now he's founded Retribution, just like how Cedric left him for MVP. They brought all that intensity to the ring, along with their incredibly athletic offense, which Ali won when Ricochet got distracted with taking out the biker mice on the outside. This did more for Retribution's credibility than anything else they've ever done. Definitely not, Raw General Manager Adam Pearce told Orton he'll be defending his W WWE Championship against Drew McIntyre next week, making the Survivor Series Go Home show super stacked. And Randy continued to play up his Miz in the Bank tension in the main event, not tagging in once. Drew hot tagged over everyone, so Autumn walked off, letting McIntyre pick up the win. What did you think of Raw? Let me know in the comments down below. This was another very watchable episode, which had some very enjoyable men's team Survivor Series builds, some great in-ring action, and everything being neatly set up for next week's mini pay view level show. Again, this is what the standard of Monday night should be, so this week's Raw 
is Avroj. If you like this video, please support WrestleTalk, give us a subscribe, as Luke and I will have our full Raw Review podcast live stream later today. There's been a scary arrest of a stalker outside WWE star Paige's home. Click the video on the right to find out what happened, and what are the 10 best Survivor Series elimination matches ever. Click the video below that for Adam Blompier's latest list. I've been Mr. Davis. Jam that jam.